exciting superstars. So Mogsy and I, we are back. <laughs> Mogi has been an absolute treasure. I've really been surprised by how much I've bonded with him over the past week. Um, and what I want to talk to you about is how I'm making sure he gets a really, really good start. He's actually quite young in his brain, a little bit younger than I sort of anticipated. And his fitness level, even though he's been running around the field, was actually really, really, really poor. So we're taking it really, really easy with him and making sure that he gets a really good start and a really good experience, a really good experience so that he feels happy, healthy and just good to go. We, want, we don't want to get to the point where he's bucking and he's unhappy. I want to make sure his tummy's feeling good, his teeth, etc. So I'm going to go through all of that with you today. It's all about how we've spent the week prepping our little man to start his journey on the saddle. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I can't wait to show you. He's so cute. Ah. This week was all about A, getting to know our little Mowgli. But second of all, making sure that he's a healthy animal before we just get on and ride him and start to exercise him. So for the first couple of days, all it was really about is making sure that he didn't get stress colic with the new environment, that he was eating happily and as you can see, he's eating pretty happily. <laughs> and then after that, we're able to move forward. So let's have a look at his food first. So step one, I give him a constant access to hay. And for me, I really like my horses to never, ever, ever not have access to hay. So I use haylage, um, but you can also use hay itself. Um, I just recommend if you do, you wet it. And in the first couple of days, I didn't feed him any hard feed. I only fed him hay. But it was a constant, constant supply. I want him to eat as much roughage as he humanly possibly, well, horsily possibly can. And the reason for that is with horses, if their guts keep turning and their tummies keep turning over and over and over, they tend to avoid colic and it certainly helps them with stress things like ulcers, etc., etc. Because he's come from the track, the likelihood of him having ulcers are quite high. So in the first instance, I want to try to treat him in a very natural way, and that is keeping that roughage moving through him. Now, ideally, I'd rather his hay on the ground, but again, as I mentioned before, with horses, it's sometimes about the lesser of two evils decision more than um, a perfect decision. And with him, he spreads his hay all over his stable. He's pretty messy so that he ends up consuming shavings and things like that, weeing on his hay, pooing on his hay. So it needs to be up. He's also a little bit of a baby. So he loves to play with things. So if it's too low, he sticks his foot in it, breaks the hay net, potentially hurts himself, pulls shoes off. So the compromise I've had to go with him is to put his hay up high but I've made it so that it's very easy access, so that he doesn't have his neck and head up for too long. So if you have a look here, you can see that I've got really big holes. So it's a little bit hard to see because the hay's there, but you can see it's a, it, that's the shape size of the hole. The holes are really, really big, so it gives him easy access to the hay. So he takes a mouthful and then he can put his head back down to normal. He takes a mouthful and puts his head back down to normal. The downside of these hay nets is they make a bit of a mess. What I've done is I've ensured that the ground underneath his hay net has no shavings and it's nice and clean. So any shaving, any hay that does get on the ground, he isn't going to hurt himself by eating shavings or anything like that. It's not going to get monkey, man manky, it's not going to get dirty. It's going to be completely okay and safe for him. So the first two days, all he did, eat hay eat hay, took him for hand walks, showed him loads and loads and loads of love and just got to know him. Just made sure that his tummy was okay. <laughs> Mogs. There's Mogi. After a couple of days, I came up with a few understandings. A, he takes on stress quite a lot. The first couple of days, he just slept flat out in the stables and you can actually see this is day four and he's actually here 
eating breakfast in bed. So he's laying down in his stable eating his breakfast. But what it shows though is he internalizes things. He takes it, makes it quite, it's quite stressful for him. So once I've, once I've got to know him a little bit and I've seen him eat and he's eating his, his food, then I look at his body. He's filled out again a little bit more. He's taken the stress away. He's drinking. So I can then look at what he needs. Now, he's a little flighty, but it's flight through fear. And at the same time, he's actually quite unfit and lack of muscle. So for me to put a saddle on him right now is going to be quite uncomfortable for him because he doesn't really have the muscle to protect his organs and his rib cage and that sort of thing. So what I want to do is actually slowly build a bit of muscle and a bit of a bit of a, a buffer around him before I actually get on. So this week has all been about getting a little bit of protein into him but with the majority being roughage. So 90% of his food is roughage and then a little bit of protein as well. Because he's quite flighty, the inclination is to potentially not feed him too much protein. But you've got to look at why he's flighty. He's flighty because he's a little nervous, because he's a little unfit and he feels like he can't do things. So if I help to increase his fitness and do things nice and slowly, he should go quite well. So we're going to go now and have a look at the actual food that I chose to feed him this week. First, we start with the hay. If you have a look here, it's a very, very simple rye grass haylage, okay? It's not too deep. It's one of those haylages that's almost hay but not quite. And it's something that he can just enjoy and eat all day, every day without getting too much protein in, but also still getting some goodness, okay? And again, these big holes in the hay net so that he's got great access to it. But then we look at the hard feed and you can do things different ways. You can purchase pre-made feed which there's nothing wrong with. The only thing I'd recommend to you is really make sure that they're low in sugar. Um, and this is what I've really started to do with Mowgli this week is try to just get a little bit of hard feed into him, a little bit of protein, but coupled with loads and loads and loads of roughage, okay? How do you feed a horse and make sure you don't get colic, make sure you don't get sick? Little and often. So I feed him five very, very small little feeds over a 24 hour period. So the size of the feed might only be, was well, only about a half a dipper of food. So it's not a lot and it's just a little tiny bit. So the majority of the feed is roughage and I use something that's called sugar beet. Speedy Beet is the brand name. You soak it, it comes in a pellet form and or a flake form. You soak it in water and it comes up like this. Now it's quite bland, so some horses don't necessarily like to eat it. And it's quite, it's a food that requires quite a lot of digestion. So it doesn't tend to go through the animal. It tends to really um, go work its way through the digestive system. Because of that, if you've got a horse that's feeling a little bit of discomfort in his tummy, he may be not inclined to eat this. And as a result, we want to fill it up with molasses and sugar because we want them to eat. If your horse isn't eating his hard food, there's a reason for that and that's okay. Just throw it away. Leave it there for 10 or 15 minutes. If he doesn't eat it, throw it away. He's got hay. And when his tummy's feeling strong enough to eat, he will eat. Okay, so don't be pressured when you've got a horse off the track that they're a little skinny and you want to get food into them to make the meat by putting sugar on it. It's just like you wouldn't roll your vegetables and candy floss for your, for your kids. It's the same thing with the horses. So the majority of his food is this, which is speedy bait. So pop that into there, okay? This is getting five times a day. Yes, little feeds five times a day. The next thing I use is something called peas, okay? Now basically they're just regular peas that have been extruded. And when you extrude peas, they just become more digestible. What I love about peas is again, you can see them here, yeah? They look like a pellet or a flake, but they're not. They're just an extruded green pea, ultimately. And what's so good about them is they have a nice protein level, but they're still quite fibrous. And they give the same sort of 
muscle development that maybe an oat or something like that would create, but without the solid, solid crude protein in there. So it's just a little bit better, a little bit easier for the horse to digest. But again, he gets about one of these all day. So in one food, the tiniest little bit, a quarter of it, okay? The next thing I add in there is a full fat soya bean meal. Now a full fat soya bean meal is exactly what it sounds like. It's full fat <laughs> and it just gives a nice oily fat that the horse can draw energy from if he needs and just extrude if he doesn't. And you can see what it looks like here, soya bean meal, okay? It looks a little bit like bird food. I think, <laughs> but it's really, really good for them. But again, some of the horses don't like it. So you've got to just put little tiny bits in. So again, you see how much is in that? For one feed, he gets the tiniest little bit. It's like a, a, a quarter of a handful, little and often, okay? Very simple food, very fibrous, but giving him good natural no grain, low starch energy, okay? Something that's gonna constantly keep his tummy moving and something that I'm not going to see out the other end. As Soon as you see the food out the other end, in his poo, ultimately, then, well, then you've gotta to start to look, well, is that food actually doing him good? Now, minerals and what we add to that. I'm not a huge fan of minerals, but there are a few things that I like to add. So because he has a small tendon issue, and so far guys, it's there, but it hasn't been an issue at all. So fingers crossed it won't be. We give him something called Proflamade, okay? So this goes into his meal twice a day, and we give him two heaped scoops, okay? Now, looks like this, it's a bit yellow. Okay, but what this does is keeps the inflammation down. So it keeps the fluids in his body not from pooling into one area and fluid creates heat, which creates pressure on tendons. So anything we can give him to keep his fluid retention low is going to help him with his tendons and just his overall feeling of well-being. So Proflamate, it's a high form product. It's quite expensive, but it's worth its weight in gold. So we use that one. The next thing we use is a product called Oxidane. And Oxidane is basically just an overall mineral, okay? And again, it's a high form product. I've been, I've, I was sponsored by them a long, long time ago. And when I got out of competing so heavily, I kept buying it because it really is so good. Okay, so Oxidane was the other thing we use, which is just an overall mineral, which makes sure that he's not missing anything in his feed. Okay, the most important thing that I can't reiterate enough is he needs to eat little and often. Don't fill it up with sugar if he doesn't wanna eat it. If he doesn't wanna eat it, it's because his tummy's not feeling in a good enough place to eat it. So then if you have a look at what that food looks like, when you actually put it into a feed bin, mix that up a little bit and I'll show you, it's not very much. Look how little the bucket is, it's tiny. It's actually my mini ponies bucket. But you see, there's not very much in there. It's not about high quantities of hard feed to feed your horse. High quantities of roughage and hay, they need to have going through their tummy all the time. But low quantities, little and often, of the harder food to give them more protein to be able to produce muscle is what you're looking for. The roughage within the food is very, very important. And because I'm trying to go away from grain, because I'm using a more like an EPSM diet, so you guys can Google that, I'm trying to avoid grains. So most chaffs are made up of wheat or oats. Yeah, so what I'm trying to do here a little bit, and it's not something you can completely cut out, but I can just have it in mind, I'm using the sugar beet as more of a roughage. Always remembering that he's always got hay available as well. So he can take a bite of food, have some hay, take a bite of food, have some hay, okay? Don't be afraid to feed your thoroughbred. Don't be afraid to exercise your thoroughbred. You mustn't, ri mustn't try to malnutrition him or, not, or, or make him really tired 
so that you can ride him, okay? Let's have a look at the next step, which is just what we've done in terms of exercise. He's definitely not muscled and he's really not even fit enough to actually really be lunged as yet. He doesn't know how to lunge, so he's gonna, he exerts a lot of energy trying. And I want him to not feel too much pressure. I want him to feel happy and able to do the work. So this week has actually been all about controlled walking. Now we're very, very lucky that we have a walker and you can see here Mowgli walking around on the walker. He's loving it. And that allows him to walk for 20, 30, 40 minutes even and, um, and, and use his muscles. As we know for ourselves, walking is really good for us and it's the same with horses as well. He's so unfit that he really just needs to walk for the moment. And you think, how can he be so unfit? He's been in a field for the past eight months. But think about what horses do in fields. Half the time they just stand there. There's always a dirt patch in a field because they stand in one corner, you know? So they don't really exercise. So that's what we've been doing this week is really exercising him. So he started with one walk a day on the walker and then one hand graze. So we take him out in the field, hang out with him for an hour. It's a really nice bonding episode as well. Let him graze, let him wander around the field at his own free will but we also make sure that he doesn't gallop around like a crazy horse. As we've gone through the week a little bit, we've upped it to two walks. And there's a couple of things you need to know about the walks. Our walker has a really great rubber surface. So you can see here, we've got rubber bricks down here. Okay, so the surface is really good for him. So he, for his tendons, etc., it's not gonna hurt him. And also our walker isn't round, it has straight lines. So they're not going round and round and round on a tight circle and it also changes direction every 10 minutes. So all the things that are wrong with the walker, we're super lucky and ours actually solves those things. But if you didn't have such a cool walker, hand walking is all you need to do. A nice surface that's not too deep nor too hard that he can just casually walk around for 30, 40 minutes at a brisk pace and get his exercise get his exercise up, I suppose. And it's an amazing bonding scenario for you and your horse as well. So what's next for Mowgli? So next week, we're going to start to increase his exercise a little bit more, and we're gonna to start to involve the riding aspect. We may not ride him next week. We may still do some groundwork. It all depends on how he reacts. Some horses need longer time with groundwork to make them more comfortable. Other horses find it more comfortable if you're actually on them. Let me just move little Mowgli's face to face me. I still don't quite trust his back end yet. <laughs> come on, come here. There we go. So we're gonna teach you all of those things, okay? He's still gotta have his teeth done yet. So we're gonna get his teeth done before we put his bridle on. And so we'll show you that one as well. So next week is all about the groundwork we would do in preparation for riding. We may be on him next week, but we may not. But the week after we almost certainly would be beginning to get on. So I can't wait, please leave any comments that you have and I hope that this is being really informative for you so that when you guys do get your own thoroughbreds that it's not a scary scenario, that you're not in acute scaredness all the time and danger. You can see because I've taken my time with him, he's kind of fallen in love with me a little bit which is really nice. I can't wait to see you, and I fall in love with him too, I must say. I can't wait to see you next week. Please comment, 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 comment. And don't forget, guys, subscribe. The more you subscribe, the more we can help these little guys. Maybe we can have more than one. There's been some, um, some messages about having a mare. We, we might be able to do that, but we need the subscriptions to be able to do those sorts of things. Help us subscribe. Help us grow so we can help your writing dreams come true. Bye, guys. Mwah.